So a year after Resurrection was released, 2003, the Texas Chainsaw remake kind of kicked the doors open for the remake craze. It wasn't the first remake, but it was one of the bigger ones. So after that, it's like no major horror franchise was safe. The remake craze was in full effect, and it was just a matter of time before John Carpenter's Halloween was remade. And when controversial filmmaker Rob Zombie expressed interest in reviving the franchise, horror fans were cautious, but extremely curious. So here we go, Rob Zombie's Halloween Revisited. Rob Zombie's Halloween stars Scout Taylor Compton, Daniel Harris, Brad Dorif, Malcolm McDowell, and is directed by Rob Zombie. What's up, guys? I can't believe it. This is it. I believe I started this whole revisited series um, maybe two years ago, uh, as far as Halloween goes, um, with Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Actually, I did Halloween 6 before that, but I don't like to count that because I wasn't like in my full swing uh, production wise. So I like to say that it started with Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 because I eventually did re revisit Halloween 6 so I could discuss the hybrid cut. So now we've come full circle. The last one, Rob Zombie's Halloween. And this is definitely a good one to end this series on. The Halloween reviews will be put to bed after this. It's over. It, I'm kind of sad, but there's no reason for me to go back and review any more of the Halloween movies. So this will be the last. Now, does that mean that there won't be a Drum Dumps Watches down the line? Anything's possible. And I do have my Road to 2018 daily vlog coming up on the 8th of October leading up to the new movie. That will not be a review series. That will be me selecting a scene from each movie to discuss. It could be a scene that I don't like. It could be a scene that I like. Um, but it's going to be a daily vlog leading up to the new movie. Going to be a lot of fun. Also, before I get into this, just today, courtesy of Woody Bowen Designs, I can't praise Woody enough. He really knocked it out of the park with this one. Hollow Stream 3 will be coming up uh, the week after the new movie comes out. And Woody designed a shirt for me that I had in mind. I thought, hey, what if we had all five of us, four of us in the Myers Get Up, and then, of course, Jay from We Watched the Movie as Loomis. And what you see right here is what it is. It is for sale now at the Drum Dum store. Be sure to get one before Hollow Stream 3 is released onto the world. And that will be the last Hollow Stream. After that, it's over. You get three of them. So this one, we're, we're coming up with a, uh, a tagline for it, maybe Season of the Nips, something like that. We'll see, we'll see what happens. But anyway, we need to get into this review. Rob Zombie's Halloween. I watched this movie again last night. Um, this cut right here, actually, the director's cut. I believe this one's around like an hour and 50 something minutes. And if you look back there behind me, I have both the theatrical cuts of both movies. Uh, but I figured, you know what? I'm gonna watch the, uh, the director's cut and I'm gonna discuss the differences between the director's cut and the theatrical cut as well as the work print. Now, I don't remember too much about the work print. It was one of the first that I watched, actually, when this movie first came out. And that's a good place to start, actually. Let's start with the hoopla around this movie. You know, in the intro, I talked about Resurrection coming out and then Texas Chainsaw Massacre kicking open the doors for the remake craze. Well, then here comes along Rob Zombie. I still remember the day the announcement was made that Rob Zombie was going to be directing a new Halloween movie. And I remember just being excited and scared because I had watched The Devil's Rejects and I had watched House of a Thousand Corpses. And both of those movies I like, I still like. But after watching those movies, you can't deny how, I guess, dangerous of a director Rob Zombie is. You know, he does not care what you think or I think about his movie. He wants to make the movie that he wants to make. And I respect that, but the guy's got his flaws. He really does. And we're gonna get into all that. But. I remember seeing the trailer for this when, when uh, it was first released, and I was pretty freaking excited. This was Halloween like we had never seen it before. It was vicious, you know, not since Halloween 6 have we seen a Myers this brutal. 
So I'm not gonna lie, I was really freaking excited. I thought Rob Zombie is gonna knock this out of the park. And just a sidestep, you know my thoughts on Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. I still love that movie. I just watched it again recently, uh, a couple weeks ago. Every time I watch it, I like it even more. So know that going into this. But uh, this isn't gonna be like a pro-con type of review. This is gonna be, um, well, I guess a revisited review. You know, we're gonna talk about the movie in chronological order, talk about the scenes that unfold before us, and really just give you my thoughts on the movie, you know, as I was watching it. And let's get into that opening scene. This might be one of the worst opening scenes for a Halloween movie, it, 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 out of the whole franchise. And it's a shame that it's the very first scene in the movie because it's Rob Zombie literally like throwing, th well, I guess not literally, but it feels like Rob Zombie is throwing his style of filmmaking at the viewer, it, you know. Maybe I'll choke the chicken, purge my snorkel all over them flappy ass tits. Take this shit right here. And if you don't like it, then, you know, fuck you. And I don't usually use that word, but you almost have to use it in a Rob Zombie review because that's what he does. Crying shit, crying shit. It's terrible. She has beautiful eyes and her hair smells like cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Loud noises. He doesn't care if you don't like the F word, if you don't like the C word, if you don't like, I mean, it's, it's coming at you whether you like it or not. Bitch, I will crawl over there and I will skull fuck this shit out of you. Uh -huh. Not a lady, and that is a scientific fact. Uh -huh. I don't know what we're yelling about. And to me, the Halloween franchise, it's not about that. Sure, there's, there's cursing in Halloween movies. Sure, there are pr promiscuous uh, teenagers. There are, there's bad people in the Halloween movie. But there is something about the Halloween series that I think raises it above the other horror franchises uh, class-wise. It's just a little bit classier, I think. And I think the reason being is Dr. Loomis. You know, Dr. Loomis is kind of a classy guy. He's got a British accent. He's a little crazy, but you can't help but respect the guy. You know, he doesn't come off as white trash. Uh, and this opening scene really is too much. It's just insane. You got Ronnie being completely disgusting, uh, wanting to get it on with his stepdaughter, fighting with uh, Deborah Myers. And it's just a really chaotic environment. And I see what Rob Zombie was trying to do. He was trying to set up what type of home environment Michael Myers lives in which is another major problem with this movie. If you are a, a fan of the Halloween series, you know, up to this point. But I think this scene right here is probably the worst in terms of white trashiness. You know, it, the rest of the movie from this point, even in the early stages, isn't as bad as this scene, you know. It's almost a good thing that Zombie gets it out of the way even though there's still plenty of white trash stuff along the way, but I think some people substitute white trash for bad writing because some of these scenes aren't necessarily that white trashy. They're just really badly written. Rob Zombie is not a good writer at all. And he's a great director, I think, but there's just something about the way he deals with characters that ruins a movie because there's a lot of great camera shots throughout this movie that are just gorgeous to look at. But, they are just corroded by these disgusting characters. Not just in the first half of the movie, but also in the second half of the movie. What did you say? Don't oh, check it. So Lady Fuckface gives us three new chairs to learn. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, why don't we just rack a commando, flash some <laughs> snacks, <laughs> and maybe nobody will notice we're doing the same old tired oh, cheers. You did. <laughs> hey, hey, freak. Hey, freak, you want some of the young stuff? You like that? Hey. Well, come and oh, get it. Hey. Stop. Hey, <laughs> asshole. Hey, my daddy's the sheriff. Uh, why don't you go crawl back under your fucking rock? But anyway, um, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Let's get this first part of the movie out of the way. We got this disgusting opening scene. Then after that, we get a taste of what Myers' school life is. And you know, you have these bullies. And again, they're saying just the most disgusting things you could possibly imagine. I heard your sister got caught selling blowjobs in the bathroom. I heard they had to pump the cum out of her stomach. And you know what? I'll cut them some slack because I do think that there are kids that are that disgusting in school, but that doesn't mean I want to see it on my, uh, my movie screen or especially in my Halloween movie. But what Zombie's trying to do is make you want these kids to die, which 
is not the right way to do it. You don't really want kids to get killed. And of course it happens, but it feels forced. So when we see that first kill with Myers beating the kid with a, a, a branch, we're supposed to feel like, yeah, get him, Michael, but we're not feeling that at all. We're feeling like, what the hell are we watching? It just feels so forced. It doesn't feel natural at all. And it's not a great first kill of the movie because of what we're feeling inside. But then we get to Halloween night, we get to the house, Myers goes through the house one by one and kills off Ronnie, kills off the disgusting boyfriend, kills off ultimately Judith. This scene right here, I don't mind actually, aesthetically. It is a really creepy scene actually. You got Judith walking down the hall with Myers behind her, you know, a young Myers in the mask. That is a really creepy scene. You know, I think that's the big thing with this movie. There's a lot of really creepy scenes throughout the movie that work, you know, as a Halloween movie. It's almost like if you turn the volume all the way down, this would be a much better movie. So you could have like a montage of great scenes from Rob Zombie's Halloween, and it might be one of the best montages of the whole franchise. And so the second third of the movie, we've got Myers in Smith's Grove Sanitarium. And Rob Zombie, chose a different directing approach for these scenes. The camera is still, the camera isn't hectic and moving around. A good choice by Zombie, actually. Zombie knows how to move the camera around. He knows if the camera should be moving. He knows if the camera should be still. He knows uh, how to place a scene. So then we have these scenes between Loomis and uh, a young Michael Myers. All this time before this movie, I always thought it would be interesting to be a fly on the wall seeing what those conversations were like. We, we got a glimpse of it in Halloween 2. You know, you just see Myers sitting in the room and just staring through the window. These scenes don't really play out that well in my opinion. T to me, they're kind of a waste. It, zombies trying to build up to the point where Myers just stops talking. When in the original, Myers never talked in the first place um, once the kills happened. I didn't mind Myers talking before the Judith kill. But Zombie keeps him talking throughout the Smith's Grove scenes, which I think is a huge mistake. Um, let's talk about potential, because there is another scene in this section of the movie where uh, Myers kills a nurse. In the director's cut, the nurse makes a derogatory statement against Myers, and then he kills her. Cute baby. Couldn't be related to you. In the theatrical cut, they take that out. He just kills her blindly. That's the way it should have went down. That's the way the real Michael Myers would have taken care of this situation. You know, he doesn't care if you are a good person or a bad person. You know, at, a, at some point, something just clicks and he's done being a human, really. He's just a force. Where Zombie makes Myers kind of a human and then sometimes he's a force. You can't have one or the other. Okay, so now we're going to get into the theatrical cut and the uh, director's cut, uh, because we're gonna talk about the escape scene. Two completely different scenes. In the theatrical cut, Myers uh, escapes just by killing some guards, which is kind of too easy, uh, you know, because he breaks the chains, and, and, and everything before that hasn't built up to Myers being, like, indestructible. So, it doesn't really make sense. I'm not buying it. But then, we got the other scene, the director's cut scene, where there is a rape. You got these two despicable guards, which again, these people do exist in sanitariums, I'm sure, but what the hell is it doing in my Halloween movie? And they rape this girl in front of Myers. So then we're trying to humanize Myers. Uh, we want Myers to save the day. And it just doesn't make sense because that's not who Myers is as a character. And the scene is just really uncomfortable to watch. I don't want to mix Last House on the Left with Halloween. The two don't mix. And this scene really had no place in the movie. And I don't know why from the start Zombie wanted to put this uh, in the script. It makes no sense. So really both scenes I think are weak for different reasons. And also the work print. The big difference you need to know about the work print is the very ending of the movie. Zombie had to come back and tack on an extension to the ending. The work print did not have the 
full chase between Myers and Lori Strode. So really, that's all we're gonna talk about the work print. It does have a couple of deleted scenes that were cut out, which I actually like, uh, especially uh, Myers stealing a tombstone, which is aesthetically a really cool looking scene. But yeah, anyway, now we're getting into the straight up remake portion of the movie. And that's a big problem with this movie is it feels like a hodgepodge. It's all over the place. Uh, it It's like Zombie wanted to tell that first two thirds of the movie really. And then he, he was like, oh shit, we're running out of time and I still have to get to the myers Lori Strode showdown. So this last third of the movie feels rushed. But this is the most bearable portion of the movie, I think. You know, it feels more like a modern uh, horror film. The white trash element is still there, but it's toned down quite a bit. But here's the problem, okay? After watching this last night, it dawned on me. Everything... Uh, from a character standpoint, as far as dialogue goes, feels secondary. It, it has no place whatsoever. You have scenes that feel like they don't even need to be in the script, like they're space fillers. I think a very well written script is one where one scene needs the scene before and it needs the scene after, and the dialogue does that. You could take any given scene in Rob Zombie's movie in the last act of the movie, and you could switch them up and it wouldn't make a difference. That's the problem with the writing in this film. You know, you take a movie like Back to the Future. Every scene needs the scene before and the scene after. And the dialogue guides that along the way. And I can tell you right now, behind the scenes, I see you if you watch the four hour Michael Lives documentary, you can see that Zombie wrote stuff on the day. There are scenes in that documentary where Daniel Harris is sitting down with Zombie. They have no clue what they're going to say that day. So they actually wrote it right there on the day. And that's why a lot of the, the dialogue feels secondary. And by secondary, I mean what these characters are saying does not make them interesting and it does not make them likable or unlikable, really. It's just throwaway dialogue. You'll see a lot of it in this movie, and I think that's my big problem with it. Okay, now let's talk about Loomis. Um, when you think about Donald Pleasance and his performance in the original series, um, casting anybody else to play that part, you're always going to be comparing it to Donald Pleasance. You know, he really just owned that character. So every single line that he, he says, it's almost like a trademark. Um, Malcolm McDowell, in this movie, I think is a likable Loomis. He does care about Michael throughout this movie. He feels bad about the situation, about what happened. Uh, I think he's much more likable in this movie than he is in the second movie. But the, the big problem I have is, uh, you know, anytime you have those signature Loomis lines, his delivery is second rate compared to Donald Pleasance's. And he has never seen the original Halloween, and he never watched Donald Pleasance's performance, which is probably a good thing. We've given the authorities his complete profile. Two roadblocks and an old points bullets and wouldn't stop a five-year-old. Well, what do you want us to do? No conscience, no reason. Even in a, a rudimentary sense of life or death, right or wrong. As a matter of fact, I do believe it was. But he's one of those aspects of the movie that I don't mind, you know? He's not a bad Loomis in the, uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween. I guess that might be one of the good things about this movie. He does care about Michael. But uh, one thing I do love about this is Tyler Maine as Michael Myers. He really nails Michael Myers as far as his movements um, and really aesthetically. Rob Zombie nailed the look of Myers in this movie with the coveralls, uh, one of the best masks since Halloween 6.
at the end of the day, this is a really scary Myers, and that's what you want in a Halloween movie. As soon as Tyler Mayne came into the picture, I was fully on board. And, and especially that last act, the, you know, the big chase, it, it's pretty damn pulse pounding. And I will say, I do love the ending of this movie. Really, that last, like, I think it's 10, 15 minutes, that's the portion that was added on to the work print of the movie. And I think it does benefit from it because I like when, uh, you know, Laurie Strode at the end of this movie. She was pretty much juggernauted by Myers off of a balcony. And both of these characters have been through hell by the end of this scene. And then she, she sits above him and she fires the gun and screams. And it's really the perfect representation of what you've just been through in a Rob Zombie Halloween film. So guys, just to wrap it up, when I think of Rob Zombie's Halloween, I think of frustration. That's what I think of, and I think of headaches, because that's what I am by the end of this movie. I'm frustrated and I have a headache. And I was thinking about it last night. This might be like on par with Res Resurrection, because they both have their own faults, very different faults actually, you know. Um, but the last time I watched Resurrection, I, I wasn't as frustrated with the movie. Um, except for the Buster Rhymes portion of it. Um, but I guess the Rob Zombie dialogue is equal to Buster Rhymes. That's what I'm trying to get at. So it's kind of equal. Now my ranking might be a little bit different by the time I rank all these when the new movie comes out. But for a rating on this one, I'm giving it a two hours lost. It's a weird movie for me too, because I guess you really have to be in the mood to watch a Rob Zombie Halloween movie. Really a Rob Zombie movie, period. But this is definitely one of his worst. Rob Zombie's Halloween is just, it's, it's a frustrating movie. And I think it, the biggest problem with it is it wasn't a finished script. You know, I think if he would have handed that script over to a really good script writer and then they fine tuned it, this could have been a much better movie because aesthetically it does look amazing. You know, there's a lot of great visuals in Rob Zombie's Halloween, but unfortunately, the dialogue is just completely detestable and horrible. And when you don't like Daniel Harris in a Halloween movie, then that's not a good sign. So guys, that's it. The last revisited Halloween review. I can't believe it. It's finally over. I'm kind of sad. going to miss talking about these movies. But, uh, you know, it's got to end somewhere, right? So what are your thoughts on Rob Zombie's Halloween? Let me know in the comments. Also, revisited reviews are not done, though. I'm going to be revisiting It Follows. I plan on doing Predator, but um, I'm, I might hold off on that because I just don't have the time to do it right now with the new movie coming out. But uh, yeah, there's uh, a few other ones. The Thing, I want to do that one too. So yeah. And the new movie, I'm looking forward to checking that one out. I'm going to do a spoiler review and a non-spoiler review. Uh, and that non-spoiler review is probably going to be like revisited length and size. So anyway, guys, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day. And on Fridays, we do free on Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd, and I'll start us. If you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and Drum Dum out.